Hi, this is Melaine Sebastian with my Microsoft Word training videos. Um, today we are going to be talking about how to use the options uh, to change all sorts of things uh, about how um, your document appears and how you interact with your document and save it. Um, so let's get started. Um, I will be working with the snails essay and um, you can follow along if you'd like. So first I'm going to go to file so that I see the backstage view and the options button is right down here. And I get a dialog box uh, that has many subcategories within it and not all of these, um, you're, you're not expected to know all of them uh, for the Microsoft uh, certification, not for the beginner level. Um, however, some of them are extremely useful, such as customized ribbon and quick access toolbar. These actually allow you to do things like change what is in the ribbon. Uh, you can add functions or remove functions and even make your own uh, tabs, as I've done here, um, by creating a new tab clicking OK and I've, I can make my own tab and customize um, what's in it. Now, um, the quick access toolbar is very similar. I can add new functions um, from popular commands or from any command that's possible uh, in Word. I can add it up here to my toolbar. Um, but let's go back to the beginning uh, to general and we'll just work our way down um, and stop at advanced. So uh, under general, uh, the very first option, show mini toolbar on selection. So let's look, when we select something, we get a mini toolbar. Uh, by toggling that option off, we won't see that anymore. It's as simple as that. Um, live preview is when you, for example, um, hover and without clicking, I can already see what the text would look like if I made that change. Um, same for, for font. I can see a live preview uh, without actually having to commit to that change. So once again, uh, I can turn that off with the click of a button right here. Uh, color scheme, I can change my color scheme to something different. Let's, there's blue. Um, I prefer the silver personally just because it's what I'm used to. So let me change that back. And there's the silver. Okay. Um, now screen tips are uh, little helpers that pop up uh, to show you what certain buttons do uh, in the ribbon when you hover over them and you can not show them and I'm going to leave it on the default which is to show the features descriptions in the screen tips uh, and then this next category is your username and your initial so this is helpful uh, if you have multiple people working on a document uh, you want to sign in with your name and then you can always go back and change it um, to signify that a different person is now marking up the document whether it's comments or if you're just tracking changes that's uh, where this can be helpful. Also, um, in the properties, the author is automatically pulled from this box right here. So um, if you are using uh, a cover sheet or uh, some type of content control box with the author's name, it's going to automatically pull from whatever your author name is. So you want to make sure that that is uh, correct. And then your initials right under that. Uh, startup options, it just, there's really just one. Uh, open email attachments in full screen reading view. You can turn that on or off. Um, and let's move on to display. So display obviously has to do with you uh, seeing things and what is displayed and not displayed uh, in the program. So right now, let's let's exit out. I'm going to have to repeatedly exit out and then come back. Um, you see this white space when uh, we're in our page layout view. Um, and if I double click, I can actually make it go away. So I, and that's just the margins, right? Um, and double clicking will make it go away, but I can also change it. 
I'm sorry, print layout view um, is the name, not page layout view. So I can turn that off right here, and it's not going to show it until I click OK. Um, highlighter marks can be turned or off. Uh, document tool tips when you hover uh, on or off. These things right here, paragraph marks, tab spaces. Let's, let's turn a few of these things on and see. There they are. So paragraph markings, tabs. Um, now, if I click this button here in the Home tab, I'll see all of these uh, hidden elements, but when I turn it off, they're not going to go away, not the ones that I selected. To get them to go away, I would have to go back in here and uncheck them. Um, finally, I have printing options, so uh, that's all sorts of customizable things about when you print. Do you want to show uh, or do you want to print hidden text, document properties, drawings? Um, now, before you print, well, you might be working with a document that uh, you have it linked to an Excel file. You've copied a graph from Excel. Um, if you change that Excel file, depending on your settings, you might go to print your document, but you've changed the Excel file so the what you see in Word is not going to match the data um, anymore. And so you might have to or you might find it beneficial for you to update uh, this or to check this so that before you print, it'll go ahead and say, hey, let me go back and check that Excel and see if it's any different. Um, same thing for fields. If you've changed something and it's it hasn't updated yet, then you might want to have it so it automatically will update before you print. On to proofing. Uh, proofing, the biggest thing in proofing is that you have autocorrect options. So let's open that and we get a box within a box. Um, now there's five different tabs in here and they're going to jump to the front when, whenever, whichever one you have open. Um, now with autocorrect, they're uh, just like the name says, it'll automatically correct for all of these things that are in this list automatically. You can add your own. You can say um, whenever I, maybe you mistype, uh, I don't know, the word turtle a lot, and maybe you spell it like this, and you, you want it to automatically replace it. Well, just click add. There it is. So now whenever you type it, it'll, um, it'll be fixed. Um, now you can turn, now you can turn this option off, um, by toggling off and uh, all this this means is as you type the things on the left column will not automatically be replaced by the things in the right column. Um, I'm going to leave that on though because it's I think it's really nice to have. Uh, you can also delete any of the preset replacements. Tried to try. Maybe you're using the word this spelling of this word for whatever reason. Uh, just go ahead and delete it. Um, going back to the top, um, you, we can see that we have a lot of options. Um, capitalized name of days, that's turned on. All of these are turned on by default. Um, if you accidentally left your caps lock on and it can tell um, you get something that looks like this, it'll automatically correct. Um, but you can turn all of these off. Now, um, exceptions, let's open that up and you get yet another dialog box that opens up. Um, and these exceptions are things uh, where sometimes Word would make a correction, but it shouldn't actually be a correction. So they said, well, let's make some exceptions to those corrections. Um, things like abbreviations, where you put a period after, like HOSP for hospital. Um, and normally you'll notice after a period, uh, if you forget to capitalize the, at the beginning of the, the next sentence, Word will uh, normally capitalize the word for you. But after an abbreviation, that's not the start of a new sentence. You were just abbreviating. So that's what these exceptions are for. So if you have more exceptions that you need to add to the list, go ahead, uh, type you know, whatever your uh, exception is. Maybe you need to abbreviate um, HIS. Maybe that's some abbreviation for something you're doing, and you just click Add. Um, and then that's another abbreviation or exception in your list, and then you can delete it if you'd like. 
um, initial capital. So normally when you put two capitals at the beginning of a word, it will fix that as well. Um, but things like this word IDs, you might not want to correct because that's maybe the correct uh, version of what you're going for. So you can add more, um, maybe you have certain codes that are written um, or special words or passwords or something that you don't want corrected. We'll add them to this list. And then you have other, um, just for assorted things here that you don't want corrected. So um, I'm going to close this list. Um, now, there are other autocorrect functions here. Uh, there's math autocorrect. So um, by typing in any of these words, all of them have uh, the backslash next to them. Um, and if I typed this backslash PROD, um, I would automatically get this symbol instead. Okay, and you can delete things from this list and you can make your own. Um, now, if you want to use the math autocorrect outside of math regions, you're going to have to go in here and turn this on. So if you're just typing away and you want to be able to insert pi, you're going to have to make sure this is on. Otherwise, it won't work unless you're inside something like an equation. Um, uh, you can play around with these other tabs, uh, but we're just going to move on because there are just so many options here. We don't have time to quite go into um, everything, but check it out and just know that these exist um, for your choosing if you would like. Okay, back to the proofing uh, section of this dialog box. There are other changes you can make to autocorrect, uh, things like ignoring things in uppercase. Don't autocorrect those um, or autocorrect them if you turn it off. Um, there's other corrections to, to spelling and grammar. So do you want it to check as you type? Um, yes or no? What about grammar? Um, but there's even more exceptions, so you can say hide spelling errors in this document only, or grammar errors in this document only. Um, let's move on to the save category. So, um, the very first section, save documents. Uh, the first drop down here says, when you go to save, what is it automatically going to save as? Now, if you have played around um, with file, um, the backstage view, you know that you can save in all of these file formats, but what Word wants to know is which one do you automatically want to save in if you don't specify? And you're probably going to want a Word document, so let's leave it at that. Uh, the next option, how often do you want to autosave? So auto, or auto recover, it's called. Um, if you want to auto recover a document, that means if you forgot to save it, um, if you didn't if your computer turned off, something like that, you can change this so it saves every five minutes automatically. Um, you can bump it up or down according to your preferences and your needs, or you can just turn it off altogether. And this box right here will allow you to see where these auto recovers are being saved. And you can change the location by going to browse right here, and you can say, well, I would rather it be somewhere else. Same thing for default file location. Now, this is where your normal saves go. Uh, and you can also change that by clicking Browse. So two options that are very handy. Um, another useful option here, keep the last autosave version, even if I close without saving, also very useful. Um, we're going to skip over this section right here. Uh, the last section, preserve fidelity when sharing this document. The option here is embed fonts in file. So sometimes you're going to use some fonts and uh, you need to send this document to someone else who doesn't have these fonts, a certain font saved on their computer. Well, you can save your font with the document so that those, uh, whatever you've typed in that font is not lost. Um, now, you can choose just to save the characters that are used in the document. If you're trying to reduce the file size, if you're, if you're short on space, um, maybe you're emailing the file and you don't want an email that's too big, you can do that. You can just use the characters that are used, or you can leave it off and just embed the entire font. Now, this one says, well, most people have a lot of these fonts, so for the common fonts, just don't worry about it. And that's a good option. Uh, I leave that on most of the time. 
Okay, typography, don't worry about that one. Um, it's a little more advanced and probably not commonly used by most who are watching this video. Um, under language, you can set your default language. If um, you wanted to switch to Chinese, it's here. You would have to install it if you wanted to go um, to turn on the proofing. You can set that as the default, or you can just remove Chinese. And then you can add new languages here. So you just click on a language, and you just click Add. And now it's on your list. Um, you can change the screen tip language to be Fran <coughs> French or Spanish. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of this uh, section. You can also change the display language, so what language is all the ribbon, um, all that stuff, buttons and uh, boxes, what language are those in. All right, we're now on to our last section, advanced. And under advanced, there are way too many things for me to teach you every single one. Uh, so let's just go over the, the main category. So you have editing options. Um, the, the first one in here, for example, when you type, uh, if you have something highlighted, if you start typing, you know it's going to type over that. It's going to get rid of what you had in the highlight, and it's going to just put the new text there. If you turn this off, it'll keep what you had in the highlight instead of getting rid of it. Um, the, and there are other just weird little nitpicky things that you might not have ever thought about. Um, in this section. Cut, copy, paste. Uh, lots lots and lots of weird picky things that you probably uh, will never need. Image size and quality. You can say do not compress images. Um, compressing makes the file size smaller and so Word might automatically do that in some cases but you might say no, don't, don't do that. Um, document content. Um, you have things such as crop marks on pictures. You have uh, bookmarks that you've bookmarked throughout your document. Um, all sorts of weird little options that you can get Word to show or not show um, when you need. Okay, uh, display also dealing with how you see your document. And one thing that might be useful, uh, I find, is show measurements. So when you say, I want my margins to be one inch, well, maybe you don't like inches and you want to do centimeters, or you could even do millimeters or points. Um, let me make sure that's still on inches. I prefer my inches. Um, even the scroll bar on or off. When you're printing, uh, do you want to print front and back? Do you um, want to print the pages in reverse order? Okay, um, more just very, very odd little customizations that you can make. And um, I think that's a good run through of everything you should need. Um, but you have more general options, and then you have more that have to do with saving. So with that, I'm going to cut this off. Um, the other four options are a little more advanced than is covered um, in the basic test, so you won't need to really know those, though these two, as I discussed before, are very helpful. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Be sure to check out the other ones.